I suppose you could argue that there isn't very much difference between academic English and general English. Um, all the outside of technical and specialist language, um, there aren't really any grammatical patterns or vocabulary that appear in academic English but don't also occur in general English. So at that level, you could say that there isn't very much difference. But there are differences, obviously, in frequency. So if we take words like um, procedure, process, system, then they occur much more frequently in academic language than in general language, and that becomes the sort of the focus of academic language because they're more frequent and therefore more important. Um, if you look at it another way, though, we could say that academic English is quite different from general English because there are certain there are certain contexts, there are certain texts that are special to to academic communication. So lectures, seminars occur in academic life, but not so much outside. Texts as well, essays, dissertations occur in an academic context, but not in a general context. So it's the, the features of those contexts, um, lectures, seminars, and the texts like essays and dissertations that become the, the material for, for teaching English for academic purposes. I mean, if you think about skills for um, EAP, um, I suppose you could say that the most important skill is, is writing, because that's where most of the, the assessment is of, of, of students' work. But obviously a lot of other skills go into being able to, to write successfully, reading, listening, interacting with tutors and, and fellow students as well. Most of the information we write about is we gather from, from reading. So reading skills like skimming, scanning, uh, guessing the meaning of unknown words and so on um, are important skills. Um, lectures too, we gather information from lectures that feeds into our writing. Um, so having skills for understanding lectures is, is important. Different disciplines to some extent communicate in different ways. So we've tried to accommodate that in the, um, in the course by um, getting students to, to think about, to find out about how things are done specifically in, in their discipline. So just to take a, a very simple example, um, different disciplines have um, uh, different attitudes to the use of I in, in their writing. So some subject areas like education tend to allow the use of I and are quite happy with kind of a personal um, statements, whereas other subjects like engineering um, tend to avoid the, the use of I. And again, trying to get um, students to, to find out about what happens in their own discipline is very much a, a feature of the course. We've tried to, to make it a, an integrated skills uh, approach. So it's looking at uh, you know, reading, writing, speaking, listening, um, looking at academic culture, working in a, an academic environment. Whereas a lot of other um, previous material has tended to focus on one skill, so writing or reading and so on. Another thing that to some extent differentiates the material from what's come before is, is authenticity. Um, and, and we very much tried to um, make as much of the material as possible authentic. So there are authentic lectures, uh, the reading texts um, are, are authentic. Um, because students are going into their academic programmes and are not going to be encountering material that has been filtered for vocabulary they're going to get, you know, the, the, the full material um, that, that native speakers and, you know, will have to read. So to help them prepare for that, for that moment, um, you know, we, we've tried to focus on authentic material. The other thing that we've, we've tried to do is to um, consider um, current thinking in research um, and uh, have tried to reflect uh, this current uh, thinking in, in the material. So. Um, areas like uh, genre analysis and phraseology and the sort of the academic socialization um, for, for students to become members of a, an academic uh, community.